This video is about variable frequency control devices running older machinery. I'm going to try to de-geek some of the information that's out there by manufacturers of these type of devices. There's just not a lot of direct support for the application. It tends to be on the geeky side. And the device is quite complicated, so I understand you need to employ people like that to manufacture something like this. But the application is really pretty simple. This mess of wires is completely temporary, and it was really just to validate that this device is going to work with this machine. Um, now that I've done that, I'm going to move towards a permanent application. I'll probably take and build this into a either ram-mounted or side-mounted control box or electrical equipment enclosure box. And I'll eventually put remote controls either down here or possibly where the original uh, reversing lever was, these older Cutler Hammer or some of these other machinery control manufacturers that built this stuff from the 1930s on will probably be replaced entirely by either remote control buttons or possibly this box, but I, I feel the need or the desire to enclose a lot of this in one big safe container. One of the big problems with used industrial machinery is they always come equipped with three-phase motors. This one, unfortunately, has the motor data plate right where the spindle tightening nut is. So over the years, people would slip or start the machine with a spindle tightening, tightening nut on there, and it would swing around and hit the data plate. It made the data plate hard to read. I got most of the data off of it, but fortunately I found the website that uh, supported this machine, or at least now that supports the uh, people that still own these machines, and I found some data about the motor. I don't have three phase in my garage, so here's a solution. I really like this solution. It's temporarily installed. The people that manufacture this really need to get together and get with some industry people and see how this is typically set up because this box is not conducive to uh, direct application. It kind of needs to be in a cabinet. But I do have it hooked up for now. It takes single phase. 220 volt AC in the top and it more or less manufactures three phase output on the bottom. It's completely programmable. One of the big problems with starting bigger motors electrically is they draw a tr tremendous amount of power when they first start up. So by using this device it slowly ramps the motor up to speed and it keeps the current draw to a minimum. In addition to being programmable for the rate of motor acceleration and deceleration, the speed is infinitely adjustable with this potentiometer. Now these controls are a little bit too small for my liking, plus I don't know how they'll hold up in a machining environment where your hands may have chips on them or uh, grease and oil and so on. So I'll probably look to use another feature of this, which is by opening this up, it allows you to connect low voltage auxiliary or remote controls. So you can duplicate the functions of the faceplate remotely. A machine like this really needs an emergency stop button somewhere, some, somewhere big, somewhere easily accessible. In case you break a bit or, God forbid, somebody gets hurt, you need to shut the machine down immediately and fumbling for these little controls is fine for speed adjustment but not for an emergency situation. I'm certainly not doing automation direct any favors. I don't really like, like I mentioned, I don't like the configuration of this box for the application. Ordering from them, they shipped it quickly enough, but their ordering department uh, really needs a rethink. They don't accept PayPal. They don't, uh, they don't understand how email works, and uh, there's some problems over at this company. But the device itself, which is made in China, of course, actually is fairly well thought out other than the uh, physical nature of the box. 
The big advantage of using this type of device instead of a rotary phase converter is price and noise and horsepower. This device is designed to run a three horsepower motor. So for motor applications in the one to three horsepower range, this is about 300 bucks installed. A rotary phase converter might be arguably cheaper if you could source the machine parts free, like a free old motor and a bunch of used air conditioning capacitors to build one yourself, but they're in the same ballpark price range. Now with this, you have to have one per machine, so it's not a one entire building or factory solution, but I'm in a garage and I want to keep my shop garage mentality. I don't need to have big machine tools, or I should say I don't need to have a entire factory mentality for hooking up these older machine tools. A phase converter has to be stepped up by 33% because you're using two of the phases to make the third phase. Whereas this one, 100% of the power coming out of your box is fed to the machine. Because of the variable voltage and frequency this device generates, it keeps your amperage draw down lower. I already mentioned starting the motor, but I actually think that running the motor a little bit faster keeps your current draw down I'm reluctant to run the motor too fast because of its age. So I reprogrammed it for my needs. I thought that a 10 second motor spool up and a 30 second coast down was a bit excessive. So I changed those to uh, 6 seconds. When you push run, the spindle starts and starts to run and in about 6 seconds it reaches maximum speed. This machine still retains its uh, mechanical pulley to pulley variation for speed as well. So I'm going to leave that hooked up because the 1740 RPM motor actually turning at 60 cycles per second. And you can display either frequency or you can display RPMs of the motor itself. And by varying the frequency you can hear the motor slowing down. So for now, the only other preset factory default programming feature that I changed was the motor stopping feature. You just push stop and it coasts to a stop. It will power down to a stop from the default setting or you can program a longer or shorter power down and the reason for that is when this motor starts to coast, it becomes a generator, and that power's got to go somewhere. Well, there's a way to hook up a resistive brake, and you can actually force the motor to slow down, but that power's got to be dumped somewhere, and if it's dumped back into your household current, it can cause problems for other pieces of machinery, like your refrigerator. Or the power company can get upset with you, apparently. But that's it. That's pretty much uh, the experimental phase of this. Now that I know that it works with this machine, I'm going to get the machine cleaned up and permanently installed in the location that I want it in. And uh, for $300, there's Automation Direct's GS2 variable frequency drive. It works on mills. I'm sure it would work on a lathe or grinding machine, or any of that stuff without a rotary phase converter.